Keith, and you have tuned in to WYTV7, our Christian broadcast, and you have reached In the Gap. I am your host, Keith Smith, and we're glad to have you. I am a brand new broadcaster this year, and I would like to thank WYTV7 and all of the broadcasters for having me. We're excited about this season and what we're going to bring. And uh, today we're going to talk about In the Gap, what it's about, and the smoke is in my testimony, and what that means. If you go to our website at, at uh, indigapmotivational.com, you can see an about section about us. And underneath my picture, there is a caption that says, the smoke is in my testimony. Daniel chapter 3, verse 27. So we're going to get into that a little bit. But the mission of In the Gap and what we want to accomplish in this show is we're going to deal with real-life situations, things you guys are going through on a daily basis. And a lot of it is going to have to do with our choice-making ability, what we do when we make choices the importance of making choices and how to apply Bible principles to these choices to help us flow in our purpose and in our path that God has chosen for us. Now, on a daily basis, we make about 14,000 choices and decisions every day from what we eat, what we drink, who we talk to, all of that. In those 14,000 average choices we make on a daily basis, it only takes one to alter our life forever or to put us on a path where we're not making the correct choices and we're not achieving the purpose of our life. So at Indy Gap, that's what we want to do. We want to tackle these issues. And feel free that if there's a subject you want us to tackle or talk about on this show, I will be glad to. You can contact us at WYTV7. You can send us an email there. Or you can send us an email at IndyGapMotivational.com to our, our website for our business. We would love to hear from you guys. And if you send me an email about you want to hear this or talk about these things that you're going through, I will be glad to include that in future shows. So we invite you to do that as well. At In The Gap, we wanted to be a ministry where I can share parts of my life with you guys because I believe that the greatest life experience you will ever gain is not learning from your own mistakes, but learning from others' mistakes. And I'm willing to share these things that I've done and experienced in my life in hopes that you guys never have to go through it. So now we're going to talk about the smoke is in my testimony because when people go to our website and you'll see it under, under my picture, I get a question all the time. What is the smoke is in my testimony? Tell me about that. Well, actually, I was in Walmart um, not too long ago, a few months ago, and this guy was in line, and you know how Walmart is. The lines are very long. They only got three or four registers open. And the day, that day, it was packed out all the way to the aisles. So we were standing there talking, and this guy behind me kept saying how long the lines were. And he was just being very impatient with it. And I could tell it was getting to him. And then he said, man, this line is worse than the ones that Carolyn's trying to get on a ride. These are the worst lines ever. And I turned to him, and I said, sir, this is not the worst line to be in. He said, what is the worst line to be in? And I told him, I said, sir, the worst line you could ever be in is on canteen day on a prison yard when the canteen truck runs. I promise you that'll be the worst line you've ever been in because everybody's trying to get there because it's fully stopped to get everything that they need. So that line is hard. Well, he looked at me and he said, what would you know about that? And I looked at him and I told him, I said, I know it all too well. I spent eight and a half years on one of those yards. I know it. I lived it every day for 3,093 days. I know it down to the day. And I'm again sharing my testimony with him of some of the bad choices I made and how it snowballed into other things and started breeding other bad choices. And it eventually led me to the worst place in my life where I lost everything and I found myself in the worst situation. Now, circumstantially, that's what I found in the flesh part of my life. I thought it was the worst place. But in actuality, spiritually, it was the best place I could have ever been in because it really gave me an avenue and the only avenue to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I started asking uh, the guy, you know, some questions about his life, and I started relating it to my own life. And when I did that, 
you know, I was explaining to him the things that I went through and some of these choices and what it led to. And then when I got done, he said, wow, man, that, that's amazing. And he said, but to look at you now, you would never be able to tell any of that. And I said, well, praise God. There's not any smoke on me. But the smoke is in my testimony. And I began to share even more with him. And I started talking about Daniel chapter 3, verse 27. And I was telling him how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fiery furnace, that God told Nebuchadnezzar to call them out of the furnace. And when he called them out, and it told them, you know, hey, the ropes will burn off of them. And that's what they were in bondage. That's why I had them in bondage. That fire burned the ropes off of them, but it didn't burn them. The word says that it not only didn't burn them, it didn't singe their hair, but no, neither did they have the smell of smoke on them. So I looked at him and I said, even though I don't have the, the smoke of prison on me, it is in my testimony. And it's in my testimony for a reason. It's in, a, it's in your testimony for a reason. Everyone has a testimony, and it's in it for a reason. It's in there to help other people. Now, even though they can't see it in my everyday life, and I thank God for that, the thing they can see when I start telling my testimony, the smoke starts to appear. You see the full picture. So later that day, we went to a bank. Me and my wife, and we were, we were handling some uh, business uh, at the bank for the business. And the bank manager, she had heard me speak at an event before. So she was in conversation with me while my wife was in conversation with another bank personnel. And I was telling her this story about Walmart and what was going on that day with this guy. And when I got to the part that I was telling her that I told him, thank God the smoke is not on me anymore but it is in my testimony. My wife immediately turned to me and she stopped her conversation. And she said, what did you say? I said, the smoke is not on me from prison, but it is in my testimony. And it was just like this profound moment that we said, hey, God just gave us something that we really need to use. So we use the smoke is in my testimony in just about everything we do within the gap. Because not only do I believe it's in my testimony, I also believe it's in your testimony. And it's there, like I said, to help people. Help people not have to go through things if you've already been in them. So share your testimony. And in order for you to get a full glimpse of it, then I have to share my testimony with you today and what better way to do it than on our very first broadcast. So my testimony is not that, that complex to start with. I had both parents in the home. My dad was a law enforcement officer for 30 years, well known in the community. My mom was a Sunday school teacher, carried me and my brother to church uh, all the time. My dad, he didn't go as much, but he did make sure that we went. So growing up in the church and my mom carrying us all the time, I got to know who Jesus was. And when I say we went all the time, we went all the time. Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, uh, prayer groups, uh, auxiliary meetings, whatever they had, we had to go. I told my dad when he asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up, I told him I thought I wanted to be a preacher. He said, why, son? I said, because I already go to church more than he does. But I'm thankful today that my mom made, made us go like that. Because even though I didn't have a relationship with Jesus for most of my life, I knew about him and knew who he was. And I can promise you, when I got in the worst situation of my life, he showed up. So I'm thankful for that. And even growing up, I admired how my dad was and how people and, uh, respected him and, and came him. My dad was a guy in the community that if you needed something done, you came to him. And I admired that respect. And I was a good athlete, a, a good student, made good grades, even had a chance to go to Clemson and play some ball. It was, you know, I've had opportunities in my life. I didn't come from a broken home. I didn't come from a, a, a story where I didn't have influential people in my life setting good examples for me. So for most of my life, it was really good. I spent about 15 years in management uh, for major corporations. So my life was on a fast track. And I always felt like something was missing from it. But even being an athlete, I never wanted to be a professional ball player. 
All I ever wanted to be was like my dad because he was my hero. To this day, my dad's the greatest man I know that's ever walked this earth. And I'm thankful for the time that I got to spend with him. And as I got older, I started experiencing some problems, health problems from playing ball those years, lifting weights. It kind of built up. So I went to a doctor and he put me on pain medication, something so simple. And I stayed on it for about two years and nothing ever happened to my situation. It didn't get any better, nor did he try to send me to any surgeons to take care of these things. He just kept me on medication. But when we go back to what we said in the gap was about, it's about making good, sound, judgmental choices. Well, the first error in my choice making was when this doctor was not taking care of the situation for me, I should have changed doctors, but I didn't. I stayed on the medication too long until he wouldn't give it to me anymore. By this time, I was already addicted. I'd never been addicted to anything in my life, so it was a new experience. But I'd already found out not only did this opioid pain medicine get rid of the pain, it also got rid of other things in my life, pressure, financial obligations, things that were crowding in. It would just give me a release from that. Well, that was the wrong release. Well, it kept getting worse and worse. And during this time of addiction, I thought that I had this under control. Well, lo and behold, I wouldn't talk to anyone. Because by this time, not only had my life went in the path that I wanted it to go, I even achieved the dream that I always wanted to have. I was a law enforcement officer, just like my dad. I handled the investigations that went on in my hometown. I was the next man under the chief of police. My career path was set for me. But what people didn't know was I was making all these bad choices that I wouldn't talk about. I wouldn't speak out about it because I said, Look at who I am in the community now. I can handle this. And I didn't want people in my business. So, but also, too, I didn't have a relationship with God like I should have. So it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And the choices kept getting even more worse. And me, who I was in the community, thinking no one can do anything to me. By this time, the addiction was thinking for me. Uh, I made some bad choices. I started helping the wrong people. The town that I sworn to help and the citizens I sworn to help, uh, I started betraying. I started helping guys move drugs in our own community. And I'm ashamed of that today, but I have to admit what I did. And that was in my previous life. That's part of that smoke that I'm telling you, you will have to talk about. And it may be painful, but it's there to help other people. Well, it got so bad that they found out what I was doing. They ran a six month investigation on me and they did a reverse buy from me. And they actually caught me with the drugs on me and arrested me. And I'll never forget that day because they had a sled SWAT team that they brought out. It was about 20 members deep. And I remember when they were saying, get on the ground with so many words, the, the words I've told so many people now it was being told to me. And I remember when I laid down on the ground and they surrounded me, I looked in a pothole in the cement that had water in it, and I could see my reflection. And I remember looking in it, and I could see the face of my three daughters. And I just started to think, my life was about to change dramatically. And little did I know it was about to change in ways I had absolutely no idea. And eventually, in that January of 2009, they carried me into a courtroom, the same courtroom I went in when other people were getting sent to prison through cases I had. This time they were sending me. And that's the first time I seen God show up in this smoke in my testimony, was in the courtroom that day because they really wanted me to do all of my time. They wanted me to get 25 years in prison. And the judge, he agreed. He said, we're going to do that. So they gave me 25 years worth of time. They gave me two 10-year sentences and a five-year sentence. But then God showed up. He moved on this judge's heart to run my time concurrent, which means I had to do one 10-year sentence, which was the highest sentence. And I had to do 85% of that, which averaged out to be eight and a half years. 
112 months or 3,093 days, any way you want to look at it. But the journey and the part of my testimony where the smoke is, it wasn't in my previous life. To me, it actually started happening when I got to prison because it really shocked me. The two things that really shocked me when I first got to prison, not the fact that I was a police officer and now I'm in prison with people I sent to prison, was the first thing that got me was how really good a shape these guys were in. The second thing was the Bible knowledge that they had. Man, it seemed like everybody knew, knew about the Bible. They knew everything about the Bible. And I was like, man, this is amazing. So I said, you know what? If I'm going to be here and there's nothing I'm going to be able to do about it, then I need to start sharpening my skills. Maybe I need to start studying the Bible. Maybe I need to start working out and take care of myself just like they're doing. So I started that, and it seemed like the more I started reading the Bible, the less of it I started to understand. And I would read passages two or three times, and I still couldn't get it. But one day in a cell, I was in a cell by myself, 10 by 10. I'll never forget it. That's when I feel like I had my burning bush moment like Moses did. That's when I really had my face-to-face with God because that's when I had my meltdown because the magnitude of everything that just happened started to close in on me. And I remember that day so vividly. And it was in 2009, later in the year in 2009. And that day I just could not stop crying. I thought about, hey, I've lost my family. I've lost my career. I've lost home. I've lost everything. Nobody is, is uh, contacting me. I'm not getting letters you know, hearing anything from my kids at that time. And I felt like my life could not get worse. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I hadn't reached out to him fully like I should have. Even though I was reading the Bible, I had not submitted my life to him and the purpose that he had for me. Well, I can remember something in my mind was saying, open your Bible up. And I opened my Bible up and just set it on the end of the bed, but I wouldn't look at it. And I continued to cry, and I continued to cry, and something just kept telling me, look at your Bible, look at your Bible. And I remember just saying, Lord, I can't do this. Please help me, you know, take this from me, or just take me, period, because I don't want to go through this. This is too tough. But something kept saying, look at your Bible, look at your Bible. Well, I looked, I finally leaned over my Bible, and I was still crying. And I wouldn't look at it. But then eventually, I finally, I couldn't help it. I looked at my Bible. And it had flipped open automatically to Isaiah 41, 9 and 10. That was the first two verses that caught my eye on the left hand top of the page. But only half of verse 9 was showing. The other half was on the previous page. But what I didn't know at that time was God had that Bible specifically cut for me. To see just that part of passage of number nine that I needed to see down in the number 10. And when I looked at it, the first words that I seen, it says, for I have chosen you and not cast you away. And man, that was like God speaking to me. And it wasn't in an audible voice, but I, that's the first time I can honestly say God spoke to me. He was telling me, I have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am your God, and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. And I believe that day when I read that, and I could understand it clearly, I said, you know what? God has purpose in this. And I remember drying my eyes, and I said, if I'm going to have to do this, let's do it. But I'm going to do it with God. And I remember sitting down on the middle of the floor by myself, and I just really surrendered my life. And the things that started to happen was just amazing. Well, I eventually left that yard and I went to another prison yard. And the day I got there, I'll never forget this either because this was another profound moment in my life. It was on a Wednesday. And when I got to the yard, I was kind of feeling my way around and meeting some guys. And they were saying, hey, we got church service tonight. Come to church because you seem like a good guy. You know something about the Bible. Come on and go to church. We got a really good speaker coming. And I went to church that night, and they talked me into it. They said, get there early because everybody comes to hear this guy preach. 
even the guys that don't normally go to church. And it was a packed house. And I'll, I'll never forget, he preached on Daniel chapter 3 in a way I had never heard this before. And little did I know what type of effect it would ever have on my life or even carrying through my life. But for some reason, every word he spoke, I believed him. I believed that everything that God had done in his life, God would do in my life. I had never been like that before. But I believed every word he said. And when I went back to my dorm, I couldn't even go to sleep that night. It, it was on me. And I made a conscious choice. And this is where I started changing my choice pattern to match what God says in the Bible. I said, you know what? If I believe this, I got to start living it, even in prison. And that's what I started to do. And man, I cannot wait to, to share some of the experiences that I've had, uh, some of the things I've seen God do for me in prison. That's where the real smoke is. You know, where I didn't look for him in the big, the big miracles of life, I had to start looking for him in a bag of coffee. And when you start looking for God in the small thing, oh man, you expect him to show up. You expect him to show up in the big things. And that's how he built my faith in that. And I will share some of these uh, moments with you guys through future episodes. It's just too many to get into today. And I will, but I just want to concentrate on the smokers in my testimony for a minute. And I want to encourage you guys that no matter what you've been through, God can help you recover. There is smoke in your testimony that you have to share. There's going to be things in there that's going to hurt you to share, but it's for the greater good. It's to glorify God and say, it's not me, it's him. Because the way I've turned out has nothing to do with me and all to do with God. But if I can recover from the things that I've been through and the bad choices I've made to live a wonderful life with God now. And just to share with you, man, upon my release, not only do I have my daughters and my grandkids back in my life, I had prayed that God would give me my family back. And he did. He gave me my daughters and my grandkids back. But not only that, he gave me a brand new family a godly wife who can help guide me and, and, and be my support through anything. You know, two, two more kids. I have five kids now, 11 grandkids. You know, we, we have a wonderful, peaceful home. We have great kids. I got a great job. And now we own our own business. You know, and I've only been home two and a half years. That's not a lot. And God moved with speed. And when I left prison, I had a 10-year goal plan. I had a 10-year goal plan that God completed in only 10 months because that smoke is in my testimony. God put value on what I went through. But even in the midst of all the bad times, and you haven't heard all of them, trust me, we will get to those in future episodes. And if other things you want to hear, please let me know. But God put a value in me, and God said now, it's time for a return on my investment. And that's what I want to do. I want to give back what he put in me to others. And that's what having the smoke in your testimony should mean to you. And you may not have been through all that I've been through, but you've been through something that can help somebody else. So I'm telling you now, it's not just smoking my testimony. It's smoking your testimony as well. I've done had to deal with gang members, at risk youth, addicts, you know, because I had been one. Praise God, I've been over 11 years clean and sober. Never went to a rehab or detox program. Jesus Christ did this for me. And I live a wonderful life. It's not that complicated. All you have to do is just surrender everything. Give it up to him. That's what I did. Now, guys, I appreciate you joining in today. I appreciate all of your prayers, all of the feedback that we can get. And I thank you for joining us. And I want to thank you as well and ask you, please, as I give my thanks to WYTV7 and all the broadcasters, if you believe in our mission and what we're doing, if you believe in, in, in my testimony today and in the things you'll see in the other broadcasters' testimony, if you believe in this, please donate to them because that's what helps us continue to have this testimony and give our smoke out to other people that's in this testimony. 
WYTV7.org is the place you can go. And you can just hit the donate button. And you can donate right there. And also, too, guys, hey, don't forget, visit us at IndiGapMotivational.com. And you can also follow us uh, if you go to our contacts page off of that. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and also we have a YouTube channel. I've already got videos online dealing with other subjects. And I promise you, through my vast ray of experience and some of my life experience that I've been through, I promise you there's nothing I, I haven't been through that I won't be able to relate to you. So please contact us at, through email there as well. And I just want to tell you, uh, just keep us in prayer as we keep you in prayer that we can continue uh, to do this. And I would like to close out just giving God thanks. I want to thank God for this opportunity. I want to thank God for what he's done in my life. And I especially thank God for what he's doing in your life. You may be going through something at this moment and you have no idea how close God is to resolving that. All you have to do is surrender. Reach out. You don't have to sit in the floor of a prison cell like I did. You can do it from your home. You can do it right now, whether you're listening audience on podcasts or a visual audience through this broadcast. Wherever you at, you can reach out right now. And if you're going through something at this moment, just say that little prayer. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And, that, and I just want to say, you know, by doing that, it's that simple. In his word, 1 John, it says, if you confess your sins and, and to God, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's all you got to do is just confess it. Say, Lord, I can't handle these situations anymore. I give them to you. And when that happens, watch the smoke start to leave you and get in your testimony and start affecting other people's lives. Hey, we'll see you guys next time. I thank God for you. I thank God, and I'm going to continue to pray, not only for our broadcasters, but our viewing audience and our listening audience as well. And please don't forget to donate to WYTD7. We thank you for joining us, and we ask you to come back next time and stand in the gap with us again. This has been Keith, and I've enjoyed it. See you guys next time.